What's really strange about the U.S. Mint um, has more to do with gold than it does with silver. Since 2020, um, literally, I, I've had conversations with Chris about the on and offline, the amount of percentage, anyways, of sales that are done in silver since 2020 are north of 90, 95%, easily, for everybody. Um, and gold has been an afterthought by and large over the last two and a half years since COVID. And what was most startling to me about everything that is the inefficiency of the U.S. Mint is not the fact that literally since March of 2020, we've had these elevated premiums on Silver Eagles that have never come back. Whereas if you would have called me on Thanksgiving Day 2019 and said, hey, I want to buy a million dollars worth of Silver Eagles, I'd say, okay, Rob, three and a quarter over spot, mm -hmm. 265 back if you want, over spot if you want to sell them back to me on Christmas Day. I'd say, you know, you got about 75 cents spread. You call me back four months later in March and the bid on those is 11 bucks over and they've never come back down ever since. But they have swings of a dollar or two, but they have been elevated 100% of the time since COVID. Now, what is strange about things is that in all of 2020 and in all of 2021, the Gold Eagles stayed where they always were my whole career, or you could buy Gold Eagles at 4%, 4.5%, 5% over from a retailer like myself, but the Silver Eagles are now costing you $13, $14, $15 over spot. It's been that way forever for the last three years where things got really weird with the U.S. Mint. Now, I would have bought what you said about me, the fact that the rumor is that the Treasury Department uh, would have to sign off on the ability for the U.S. to pay higher premium for the blanks. So Sunshine is, is doing what any capitalist would do. They're selling them to a higher bidder. Everyone wants it. And, and selling it at spot or near spot is a dumb deal for Sunshine if they can sell it to much more to everybody else. But the disconnection and all of this comes in, we get a, a phone call as one of the 27 U.S. Mint authorized resellers. We get a call from the U.S. Mint in June, late June of this year saying, yeah, by the way, we're going to um, curtail gold production by 50% into the second half of the year. Now, what? Why the hell would you guys do that if no one's been buying any gold for the past two and a half years, just silver? So either they're having the same problem with gold, which I don't believe, because, you know, one ounce gold bars cost me the same today than they did five years ago. Uh, Maple Leafs are just a little bit higher gold than they were five years ago. But the Gold Eagles, my cost on Gold Eagles is between 10 and 11% over the price of gold before I make a penny. I've never sold them to the public my whole career above 6% ever. And now I'm buying them for north of 10 and they're impossible to get. So something is really weird with the the U.S. men, and I guess there's a fine line, Rob, and you guys between conspiracy and reality. I don't know what the answer is other than to say, if it were just the Silver Eagles, I'd buy the argument. Now that gold is into this shortage problem with the U.S. men, I throw up my hand and say, I don't know. Is it something much bigger than that? Are they trying to mitigate a run on the dollar? Are they trying to make it more difficult for people in this country to accumulate gold and silver legal tender in the United States and flee the dollar? or the, the, the related, the potential problems that we see coming, or is it something just as simple as a lack of supply? I don't know, but I will tell you, of all of the major mints of the world, they are by far the worst, uh, the, the least amount of efficiency and the worst performing in terms of getting product into the public's hands. By far, not even close. Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> so, Andy, I've got a couple questions here. Um, is, you you mentioned that would it require an act of Congress to enable the mint to raise the price it pays for blanks? I don't know if it's an act of Congress, but it's it, Janet Yellen would have to sign off on it. The Treasury Secretary has to sign off on it. I don't know what goes into so there's, there's bylaws the, governing the mint in terms of what they can pay in relation to spot for silver. Blanks. I do believe so. Yes, I do believe that. Okay. Is the case. Well, it, it seems like for the most part, the U.S. Mint's the only mint having this issue because right now, you can sell me a one ounce silver maple leaf for almost two bucks below what you're willing to pay me for a Silver Eagle. Yeah, and that, that, that's true. 
I, I, I really, it, it, it makes it makes zero sense. And, and to make things even more complex is that the Sunshine Refinery, who provides the planchets or the blanks to the U.S. men, also provides the blanks to the other sovereign men, like South Africa and a few of the others. So while they have no problem delivering product to the other sovereign mints, the U.S. is sitting there saying for whatever reason yeah we've ramped up supply they're making like 80 85 thousand of them a month when they prove it in 08 and 09 and back when you know they were making 50 million a year that they can make four to five million of them a month instead of 70 80 90 thousand they are woefully behind the curve in terms of demand meeting supply um it, it's just a mystery i mean people have been asking me this question for two years now and i throw up my hands and say it's just it's just a total and complete mystery. You would think that if, if there was that much demand for the Silver Eagle product that the U.S. Mint would, or that the Treasury would pay more in the open market, if they're going to get it on the back end, I don't understand it. And it's it, this is why you have people who walk that line of conspiracy and reality. What is the truth? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I think to, to throw in some, just some extra thoughts for people to ponder and, and potentially argue, um, it seems as though we worked on a particular type of system now that the market has shifted from a physical perspective and the flows have changed. I mean, flows west to east, out of the COMEX. Uh, I think Ian, last year at Silver Symposium, my friend was talking about and asked one of the panelists at one of the, 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 um, the panels asked, why are the, uh, the, essentially the refiners going to COMEX? to get silver because he can't get it from the miners. So maybe we're just living in a different world in which shortages along the supply chain have caused everybody to say, well, we have two things. You have the physical shortages and you have the difference between the physical and the derivative market. Maybe everybody's protecting their their margins and protecting their business by saying, for example, if, if, if we're selling to the mint and they're not giving us preferred pricing, I can go out here and get it in the market. Why wouldn't I go out to the market and just not give them? You know, maybe it has to do with certain entities along the supply chain not adjusting to, you know, the pricing signals. Do you think that that could be a part of it? Or do you think there's something else going on to where the American Mint has, the U.S. Mint has basically just said, we no longer have that, you know, prerogative to supply the American Eagle. We don't care about it anymore. Is it more they're looking at it as an artifact of an old system? Or do you think it's still supply chain stuff that's causing some of these issues? And I'll open that up to anybody who wants to talk about it. I have a hard time believing it's it's really the supply chain issues. I mean, the supply chain is distorted for sure, uh, and it's fractured, and it sucks. Um, and I can read you a list of after this of I had my operations a week or two ago provide this to me so I could so I could talk about it on podcasts of all the refineries throughout the world who aren't taking any new business or are, just don't have the capacity, but. They've been the only one that who's been like this since 2020, and it's been three years of it. It's something to me. Um, I don't know that it, that they look at it as an artifact of of you know bygone uh, times, but um, there it, it's the behavior is is wholly unusual. And um, when it's easier to get South African Krugerrands or uh, Austrian Philharmonics than it is U.S. Eagles for the public. Something is really wrong. And and now the fact that they're doing it with gold it is what opens, I think, the door to this being something much bigger than just what we are being told. Because with gold, they don't have the same restrictions that they do with silver. They can go out into the open market anywhere and buy gold. And, and buying a, a gold good delivery bar is not going to carry the type of premiums that you see in um, in, in silver. So I, I just, uh, I don't know, you guys. I, I, and one other point, and that is I asked Keith Newmeyer once about the fact, why don't you guys just all withhold like you do? Why don't the other miners? And he more or less said that these miners, many of them are living hand to mouth and they have a good deal. When they pull the, the dory out of the ground, they call someone like JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs and they say, here's where you deliver it to, the money will be in your account in an hour. And so, you know, they send it off to a refiner somewhere on behalf of the bank and they get paid like that. They don't have the ability or the wherewithal to hold back production or to disintermediate the bullion banks. They're, they don't have deep enough pockets. Maybe that will happen someday, don't know, but there are very few mining companies like 
First Majestic and Keith who who have this vision. Most of them are just trying to get paid and pull the metal out of the ground and, and keep on going. So I don't know. It's a good question, but it's a tough one to answer. Yeah, tough one to. Answer.